then the spring terms, like anything else, you have the ID inside diameter, OD outside diameter, you know, wire size, wire diameter, counterbalance assembly, as we talk about an assembly, it's the spring, of course, it's also drums, it's the bearing plates, it's the torsion tube, and all that, when we talk about anything uh, down the line in the future, we say counterbalance assembly, we're going to make sure that you, when we talk about that, so you know everything about that assembly. That means the type of drums, the cables, cable length, um, drums, uh, bearings, torsion tube, the mounts, everything as we talk about a counterbalance assembly. Of course, you guys know the wind of a spring, left hand, right hand, and if it goes clockwise, it's what type of hand? Anyone, anyone? <laughs> and, and it's you know we have some some charts here as well always good to have on hand uh, but knowing your left hand your right hand um, cycle life we talked a little bit about it earlier about doing an extension of cycles and getting a bit more cycle life like a square wire but again cycle life is a term you guys should really know you know the gasma uh, standard is 10,000 cycles you can test up to uh, in that uh, eight, nine, ten thousand range. You get ten thousand cycle spring. Uh, but remember that homeowners today, if they're going to that front door, if they're using that as their front door, and they have kids and other assemblies, that could be used up to five to seven times a day. And if someone's doing that rate, and even more on the weekends when they're going in and out on a regular basis, that could mean that within five to seven years, you hit ten thousand cycles. So keep that in mind, you're going to see that uh, more and more in the industry, and we need that commercially and residentially, where cycle life is going to be becoming something that people will want to increase. Just as more people come into a door dealer these days, the homeowner comes in with the paperwork about a garage door, what they want, uh, because information becomes more available. Um, locations are getting smarter about knowing the cycle life, and if I can increase the cycle life, I can decrease times after you have service done and I'll, I'll pay more up front for having uh, less re uh, reason to come back that's going to happen more and more uh, commercial accounts residential accounts going to understand that uh, there's being talked about <laughs> we have the coil and the stretch of the extension spring we talked a little bit about that before and then IPPT we're going to be using that a lot when you look into the engineering programs is knowing some of these terms IPPT. Anyone tell me what I rate? Remember, it's a rate. IPPT inch pounds per turn is a rate, and that's what you're going to be looking at when we go on further. But when you go into a rate book or anything else, is knowing what some of this stuff means because it comes into looking at all these scale tables and everything else, uh, of what you have to do with that. And of course, pounds. Knowing you know the weight of the door, uh, the pounds will pull the spring, all that's going to come into effect. If you don't understand that, going into the engineering part of it is going to be tough. This is what I referenced earlier about having the uh, the charts we have, you know, showcasing, of course, you know, all the information about the IDs. What's the most common one? Three quarter inch, two inch. You know, if you see something that's really odd, maybe it's not the right size to get in. Maybe you're looking at it. OD instead of ID. But these charts come in handy because they give you. You know, the wire chart, of course, the left hand and right hand on the winding, and then standard IDs, and then the official colors from DASMA on all the different springs. So they come in handy. We, we have charts like that that are sticky charts. We always recommend throw them on your whatever boxes you guys use to keep the invoices in and repair any, any of your paperwork. That comes in handy to reference that stuff with them. And what I want to also cover is some of the simple points, and it sounds simple, like, you know, no. But you got to know how to properly do that, and, and we've heard, you know, stories of I just throw it on a scale, do it five or six times, take the average. And, but you all know if you're off by five, ten pounds, that is a major difference in the spring, and that can cause an issue of something being, you know, real hot or being, you know, something that's going to fall down the header. Um, then you're making adjustments, and then you end up with a perfectly balanced door, yes or no. So knowing how to properly weigh a door, we have, you see the the, the lever arm here. It's probably one of the best ways to weigh a door, any size door. You can take a scale to it, have the door closed down on top of the little round piece there, and it's the lever arm. It's going to then be on the scale 
You take that number that you see and multiply that times five, that's the way of the door. Um, it's probably one of the most accurate ways to do it and safe ways to do it. Because again, you can put that down on the scale, it lays down on that. And you know, when you do weigh a door, you wanna make sure as well, it's the dead weight. It's the dead weight and make sure that it's free and clear on the sides. And that's a little bit of a hard thing to do, especially if it's just one guy on a commercial job. But if you can lay that stuff down, you know, with the springs, uh, make sure you take the tension off of that. It's it's doable. And of course, when you come to an extension spring assembly, yeah, you're you're lowering a dead weight door, so that's a little bit harder. But traditionally, you're looking at a smaller door. Um, but knowing the correct weight of a door is key, and knowing how to get it. So we, we recommend using that the counter lever arm assembly. Then of course, knowing all the specifics of the door, it's key. You know, as soon as you get there, you guys should be already tuned into get to the job, and you're already measuring in you know, the opening, measuring the door, getting all that stuff. But and the tracking, know the track assembly. You know, what radius do you have? Double check it. You know, take the tape measure and run it. It doesn't hurt knowing that it's 12 inch, 15 inch ra radius. You know, that's some of the standard stuff, but then seeing what high lift you do have, and what type of high lift. Do you have a straight vertical lift? You know, do you have a little bit of um, a radius with a little short bit of high lift? That's the sort of thing you need to take into account and jot down on a regular basis. And then double check what drums you do have. You know, jotting that stuff down, what comes in handy is later on, yes, you might be sitting there going, oh, well, that door should have this and this on it. Well, if you did the work the first time and knew what drums were on there from the original ticket, you can actually do a lot of spring engineering from a distance. And again, that's one of the key things we're going to get into a little bit here is having all this information makes it so much easier when there is an issue down the line. And you can do stuff from your office to go to the job site, guns loaded, with all the stuff you need to get the job done. And knowing it's at the you know, drums, springs, and you know, that counterbalance assembly we're talking about. Springs, drums, cables, and of course, knowing you know the shaft. Where's the shaft at? Is it a standard height? Um, one thing I wanted to ask is when you guys come across a torsion spring that you're installing, and let's say you get out there, does anyone go through the motions of figuring out how many wands should be on the spring, or do you guys just think you usually know it and you just start and go through it? Show of hands, anyone do any anyone do any calculation to double check to make sure you got the right wands? They would do that. All right, how do you do it? Um, usually I measure floor to the top of the drum and then divide by the drum to come in. Yes, and the exact, the exact equation would be go from center of bar, center of the torsion bar, to the floor. So the center of the bar to the floor, divide that by the circumference of the drum. And that'll give you exactly how many turns. Now again, you can have to see with anything added to you know, the weight of the door, standard weight. Uh, you got a couple of different struts on there. That's where you might jockey you know, a quarter turn or two. But that's the exact way of knowing any job you get to. So especially when you get the high lift. You get the high lift and that shaft is a lot higher than <laughs> where it's supposed to be. It's not a standard application. Um, you know, typically those springs for that job are not gonna come with the tag that says exactly how many wines are on it. It's, it's on some of them, but not on all of them, depending on the manufacturer. Uh, that, we're not part of that. But when it comes to a replacement, you're going to have to make sure that you have the right stuff on there, not just have to count the old coils, you know, count the old line on the old springs, who what it was. Uh, that, that's a great piece of information to know. So when you get to the field, you don't have to worry about anyone else's information. Uh, that's, that's the right information. And again, you got the tools of the trade. You guys have the spring wire gauge you're sitting there with and got ours here. You also have the pocket wire gauge. Again, a little difference between them. You know, one you put in the spring, one you put on the wire. Uh, micrometer. I know back when I was uh, in the field a lot, I loved using a micrometer. It's exact. Um, this way you knew exactly inside diameter, outside diameter. You could actually spec the wire itself. So uh, another tool of the trade. Not a lot of people use them anymore, but it's also something really good to have on hand when you're looking at all different types of torsion of springs and of course the engineering of it. You got your tape measure first you need a rate book. Anyone here use any rate books or have any old rate books? Yep, still still work, they're still 
still a viable way of engineering a, a spring assembly. Um, and of course you have your computer programs that are on hand for your computers and offices and also the apps that some of you are aware of as well. And then basically you know, how to measure the spring. And with the tape measure, as you guys all know, you get to something, you don't have a wire gauge with you, what do you do? Grab that tape measure. Put it in there, count me 20 coils. Like in this spring here, I put it in, I count my 20 coils. Now I'm kind of in between four and a half, shy of four and a half inches, I'll call it 4.35. I got 20 coils. Take 4.35, divide that by 20, I got 218. I know it's a 218 wire. Now again, the spring is imprinted, it's what's on it, but you know, don't always rely on that. And I'll tell you, you know, any manufacturer will tell you, accidents happen, uh, errors happen. So double checking that is not a bad thing. It took me, you know, 15, 20 seconds. You can take the ruler, stick the ruler on there, do the same thing, count your 20 coils, you count your 20, you end up right at the mark of 218. So your wire gauge, take your pocket wire gauge, one out, see what it says, is it 218, and just lay this, you know, right on the wire, that should fit perfectly right over the wire. You're able to double check your wire gauge, wire size, with any one of these means, and doing that's not a bad thing. Double checking will come in handy, and again, when you have to do replacement, and there's no markings on it, you gotta have some, some means of doing it. We talked about what is a rate book. For some of you that used it, you know all about it, but basically, with the rate book, you can go through, and the application of this is looking at spring substitutions, how you can convert one spring to another, and again, we're all about the engineering aspect. So you have a spring on your truck. Can you use that spring to make this repair? Let's see. That's where the rate book comes in handy. The rate book you can go through and you can go to your charts on the right ID of the spring, looking at the gauge wire and the lengths. And the rate books will help you find through the IPPT how you make that replacement. So it's, it's going through and having something like this on hand and if you have the opportunity, you can always call into the office for the person that has the program on the computer or with the app assembly. Who would be converting a spring? Now, what does it really mean to convert a spring? How it's used, why it's used. And we talked a little bit about more and more commercial accounts residential accounts are going to look at once something is broken I don't want to break the same way it did again you're going to come across that and the whole idea of converting springs is then to see okay first of all that's going to possibly happen you got to be able to a, know how to do it because I want to upgrade to a cycle life also the other part of this is like we just said before getting the job done you're at a job you don't have a vast array of springs with you uh, just so you can pick and choose. You got some links on the truck, we might have some links back at the warehouse. How can I get this job completed with what we have in inventory? And that's what a lot of spring engineering is really all about, is making a better return on the investment that you have sitting at your, your warehouse, in your truck, is making that stuff work. And can you do that? And the best way to do that is looking at converting springs. So that means can I do a mix match setup on this and get what I have to work? Can I convert to Ohio Cycle Life? All that stuff comes into play. But it's stuff that you that's why we we have spring engineering in the first place. Uh, a to double check what's out, out there. Also B, what can I make that I have here work for the door? And that, that's key and it's essential actually to run the business. Now the programs. You know, we talked a little bit about it, is having the computer software programs, you know, like solutions, there's other programs out there, we're not just counting our own stuff. We're saying know a program, because you're going to need it. And having that computer program in-house, you know, in your, your home office, that's, it's essential. It's, it's a need, it has to be there. Uh, having someone that's on hand and technically knowledgeable about that as well. 
the biggest problem I'm sure everyone comes across is the old tribal knowledge. You know, this one person knows how to do it, but nobody else does. Well, this is my expert at it, and no one else is as good as that. And you go to one key person. Well, um, that's where the solutions program came in because not everyone could read a right book. Great book is not the easiest thing to work with. It's information, it's data, it's there, and it's usable. Um, but again, you have to have someone that's knowledgeable. The computer program came in just for that same reason. Now we can make it computer accessible for those who know how to use computers. Now they can access all this data on the computer. It's quicker, it's easier. A couple of clicks on the mouse, and you can be through all the information of the rate book. You give someone a rate book, you give someone the program, who's going to get the answer first? My bet would be there's some person with the computer program. Then we look at, okay, now you have someone in the home office who has the information, but you have how many technicians in the field? The guy in the field, he wants to know that same answer. And you're relying back on that tribal knowledge of someone who knows the answer, but is at a distance. That's what we came up with having the, you know, the app process, where now it's in the palm of your hands. And that's what the whole engineering process is getting towards, is getting that data, knowing the basics, turn that data into the engineering program, whether it be through a rate book and you do it, you know, with uh, following all the, the rules and accessories there to come up with the answer, or going on the computer program doing that, or through the app. The bottom line, you're getting the information together and processing it, and we're giving you the tools to take that from someone who's in the office or someone in the field. One thing I want to tell you a little bit about a story is, the whole engineering process and getting it out to everybody is for the very reason of that return on investment, that ability to be able to finish the job, uh, having it in your hands so that you can see exactly what I need to do right here. That's been the whole process of the engineering on Service Springs end saying, hey, we want to get it out there because we know getting that transference of knowledge from one person to the other, you know, it's hard to do. So it's put the knowledge in their hands. As an example, uh, I'm from New Jersey. A friend of mine is still door dealers in New Jersey. Uh, Ed Hermans from Merchantville Overhead Door. We were at the IDA show this year, and he walked up to me right before the awards banquet. We're all dressed up in our fancy clothes, and he's like, holy cow, that program just saved me so much money. I said, what are you talking about? He's like, I had a guy in the job site. He's an hour away from our home office. He's going to leave the job because he doesn't think he has the springs to get the job done. You know, doesn't have the, all the answers, didn't understand it, but he's ready to leave and he's going to drive on back. Luckily, he called Ed. Ed's thousands of miles away and said, hold on, before you go anywhere, give me the data. Give me the basics. You know, what kind of bounce somebody you got there, what's going on, give me all the information. He put it all into his little app, turns around and says, hey, what do you got on the truck now? <clears throat> Went through the process of converting a spring Nick's Matt Springs, he was able to get the job done. The guy, the technician, did not leave the job site, did not drive the hour back to the home office, then to go out to another job. And he said, think about that. He goes, holy cow, I just had somebody at a job site that was going to leave it unfinished, who was going to waste an hour, and go to another job, to go back out to that job, waste another hour, finish it all up. And I'm not going to be able to charge that homeowner all the additional time because I don't have the stuff to do it. He goes, that guy just got the job done and saved me probably about $300 of what it could have cost me in lost hours, wages, and the opportunity cost also of going to do another job. He got the job done. And he goes, man, that is more than paid for itself. And then some. And that's exactly the reason why we, we brought about the engineering of that because, you know, when you thought about, well, do you really need an app? Well, probably not. You, know, you can get by in life without having an app. But if we can put the information in the palm of your hands and make things a little easier and accessible, and you know have the technicians in there working quicker, smarter, faster, better return on the investment, it's a win-win. So we've touched base on some of the scenarios of the basics of the data, and Craig's going to go through here. Craig Redbowser, our territory sales manager, he's going to go through on actual some of the app and the processes with that. As Paul said, my name is Craig Radebaugh. I've been with Service Springs since about 1991. I remember well back in 97 when we developed and introduced the solution software for the desktop computer. 
and obviously much more recently um, making the uh, Solutions Mobile available for Android and um, the uh, Apple applications. So it's it's been a lot of fun. What is it? Um, you can download the apps obviously from the Apple Store or the um, Google Play for the Android version. Um, and as Paul said, you got all that information right in the palm of your hand. Same functionality for the smartphone version as the um, Solutions desktop version. Main features allows you to convert springs on site as we discussed. Um, you can engineer, engineer springs for standard lift, high lift, vertical lift doors. Um, you can compare cable drum specifications. You might have an obsolete drum, see if you have a drum in stock that would work in place of that. Calculating springs by IPPT. And for extension springs, you can um, engineer the what, what's that set of springs going to pull, the approximate pull for um, extension spring. And then obviously, uh, you know, how can you use your existing stock to make a repair um, in less downtime? And as Paul, that was a good illustration with that Herman's time is money. And um, the quicker you can do that, it's more profitable for you and going to take better care of the customer. Um, the first and most popular, um, you know, call that we get on our customer service lines is spring, spring conversions. Um, you're going to convert an existing broken spring to another diameter or wire size that you have in stock. Obviously very common also to increase the cycle life. Um, if you come across a door that has mismatched two unequal springs, you can convert that to a matched pair or a single spring. And um, just requires some simple input variables. Measure up the spring, your wire size, your ID, your length, and you get started. We have here the Android version. Um, that looks a little different for those of you who have the uh, Apple version, but hey, we'll kind of uh, take a look at both. And you would just open the program and click on the um, spring conversion tab. And just simply put in your inputs for the uh, broken spring that you have. In this case, 218 wire, inch and three quarter ID, and under your length of 26 inches. And um, click on the replacement tab at the bottom, and that will give you the replacement spring in the same wire size. In this case, um, your your uh, 218 uh, uh, two inch ID, because we're, we're going to talk about broken inch and three quarter ID, but you've got two inch ID in stock, so we're going to convert it to a 218 two inch. In this case, a 23 um, and a quarter inches. But if you want to um, upgrade upgrade the cycle life. I've got 225 um, uh, 2-inch in stock, then that would, you just click on the little arrow, that'll take you to the next biggest wire size, and the result is 225, 2-inch, two uh, 26 and 3 quarters. So that's an example of the um, conversion on the Android. And then on the Apple um, version, we're going to do that same conversion from a broken 218-inch and 3 quarter 26. And in this case, um, we do have a video. I'm going to get here in case I need to pause it, but open up the um, app. Um, you know, this isn't a video. This is just a. Let's see. Okay. On the computer, you see them. Let's see. You have to do something else to get that actually made better. Scroll your mouse. Okay, so you select spring conversion in your, your inputs. Your uh, one spring with, uh, in this case, you enter the ID of inch and three quarter. Select your wire size, which is 218, and then you'll enter your length. So you just enter your 26 inches, and you notice that it gives you the max turns in the IPPT. It gives you the IPPT for that spring, 30.01 in this case. And then we'll click at the bottom to the... Um, get our result of our two inch ID, and we can scroll along the side, we select the 225 wire, gives us the result of 26 and three quarters. So that's how you um, convert using the Apple program. And then in the case of the mismatched spring, I've got two different springs on this door, and I wanna um, replace that with a matched pair. So you would just, um, basically, you have the option of, um, you can 
take the mismatched pair and re replace it with one single spring or a pair of matched springs. You might you know, if you have 218 two inch in stock or maybe you have 225 two inch, you can calculate the increase size of life. And we have another video. So for spring conversion, you're going to input the specs for the first broken spring. In this case, you have one spring, two inch ID, 207 wire, and enter the length of 25. Then you click at the bottom, the mismatch tab, and now you enter the specs for the second spring. In this case, two inch ID, wire size of 218, and enter your length of 28 inches, or 28 and a half inches. Then you click the replacement tab at the bottom, and that would give you your result. You select two springs, I want a pair of springs. I slide it to 225 wire, two inch ID, my resulting length is 35 inches. So that would be the suitable match replacement for the mismatched pair. Everybody with me on spring conversions? And then the next uh, real popular application is the spring engineering. We're going to determine the proper springs for whether you have, a, again, high lift, standard lift, vertical lift door. It will do all the above. Um, it'll tell you the cable length formula. We have a specs on virtually every drum ever used in the industry in the program. So it'll give you the cable length formula if you need to make up cables. And simple input variables, I'm going to select whether it's that single duplex or triplex string that we talked about earlier. What type of lift, standard vertical lift, high lift. Which cable drums am I using? And you're going to select the number of springs. Is it a pair or just one spring? Your ID and your desired cycle life, because you can just engineer high cycle um, springs right away. And then your door specs. What, what's the size uh, and uh, weight of the door? So for our first example, we'll just go with a pretty common setup. Standard lift, 15 inch radius track. We have a pair of springs, 400-8 cable drums. Uh, we want 10,000 cycles, and we have 2-inch ID springs in stock. This particular door is a 16 by 8, weighs 195 pounds, no roof pitch, and we'll see that we can you know, get your standard pair of 218 wire or a, a slightly upgraded cycle life with 225 wire. And we have a video again. So we'll select spring engineering single assembly and we have a standard lift set up with 15 inch radius track and we'll select two because we want a pair of springs then we'll select our drum in this case the 400-8 drum and that was not a good thing to do um i was going to try to pause that but what that was displaying was actually the um as I said, it will tell you the specs of the drum. Because a lot of times, you know, we get questions about drum. What's that cable length formula? What is the um, maximum weight capacity of the drum? And that will give you all that as part of the program. So we'll just catch back, back up here. It'll tell you, you know, what size cable to use on the drum, whether you can use 316s. There we go. There's our um, uh, um, specs on that particular drum. And then the door info, we'll put the um, width and height of the door. In this case, we have a 16 wide, 8 high, and enter your weight. 195 pounds, and then click on the bottom, calculate spring. And we selected um, 225 wire, 2 inch ID that we have in stock, 31 and 3 quarter inches long. So that's our resulting spring. Everybody with me on that one? Um, spring by PPT. This is kind of a neat one here because this, um, when we looked at the first that um, conversion function, you know, we put in our spring specs and it you know, gave the FPPT and it gave max turns. Well, that program doesn't know how high your door is or what drum you're using or anything, so it just gives like the maximum turn capacity for that drum. This will allow you to accurately see how many cycles do we have for this existing spring. And if you want to upgrade, you know, it's a pretty helpful tool. So, spring by PPT, you can calculate the appropriate spring for a particular application. Very nice tool for upgrading um, cycle life. 
Again, simple in input variables. What type of door, which would be sectional versus rolling steel. Um, enter your IPPT, the number of turns required on that door, and then the ID of what's, you know, what you have in stock. You might wonder, well, how do I get the IPPT? So what we have to do is take a step and kind of go back to that very first thing we talked about, the spring conversion function. Key in the specs of the spring you have, and that will tell you the IPPT. You might remember that 30.01 was that IPPT of that first um, spring we looked at. So what we'll do in this case, um, increase cycle life scenario, we have an existing spring, 225, inch and three quarter ID 29. Um, it does have the 31.01 IPPT. And so we, we're gonna enter that information, the number of turns on the door, and our um, diameter, the ID of the spring. Then we can scroll through to um, get bigger or smaller cycle uh, wire sizes to change our cycle light. And we do build in some, you know, logic in here that if you engineer something less than 10,000 cycles, it's going to flash a warning at you. Um, and going back to um, when we were doing the spring engineering, you know, if you have standard lift, high lift, some of the logic that's built into that is it will not allow you to engineer springs that are too long for the shaft. You know, it kind of takes into account that you need room for your um, drums, et cetera, and it'll keep you out of trouble and flash a warning if you're just, you know, engineering something that you might need to go to a bigger diameter just to make it fit. Um, drum comparisons, and again, you know, this is going to allow you to check for compatible drums. Um, you may have a situation of cracked drum, broken drum, and you need to see if you, there's something compatible. It might be an obsolete drum. Do I have something I can use um, instead of having to respring the entire door? So in this case, the APCO 400-8, well, and this does have the standard vertical lift in all the high lift drums, as I said earlier. Just about everyone that's ever been used in the industry, the specs are in here. So in this case, um, we click on standard and um, it'll display in alphabetical order all the cable drums that have been used in the industry. In this case we want to see if there's a compatible drum for the ATCO 400-8. So we'll select that one and then fine print below it says there are six compatible drums. So okay what are they? So we'll click on that and um, it takes you to the next screen which will show you all the specs for that drum including maximum weight capacity, etc. And then um, you click the button to then start displaying and you can scroll through and see what those six cable drums are. And in this case, uh, Canamex 400-96 is the you know, exact same as, as Master 400-8. And that has the information for high lift and vertical lift as well. So. Kind of changing gears back to extension springs. What a neat tool, if you've got sort of some odd extension springs in stock and you wonder what the heck do those things pull, can I use these on a job and convert these springs into cash? Um, this will allow, allow you to determine that. You know, I think Paul touched on this earlier, you're just going to basically measure up those springs, um, input the wire size, and try to measure that ID or OD to the nearest you know, 16th of an inch, be as exact as you can with um, extension springs, and enter the length. And then the stretch is always half the door height. So if you have a seven foot high door, 84 inches, half the door height is going to be 24. Input your specs and it will give you the resulting. Um, the Apple version is a little more exact. It says 109.9 pounds, 110 pounds. That's close enough. So there's your result. Now the weight calculator. This one, um, this is kind of neat. Um, this is only available on the Apple version presently. Android folks, stay tuned. We're told it's coming, hopefully sooner rather than later. Watch for those updates on your app. Um, and if you haven't updated your Service Spring uh, um, Apple version recently, there's an update out there for you, and you'll get this function. This allows you to determine um, how much weight a certain, a, a given a torsion spring will lift. And there's a lot of applications for that. But what you'll do is, um, you know, measure up the spring, but you'll enter your door height, and is the standard lift, high lift, etc. Select your drum, and um, put in the spring specs, and it'll give you the result. 
In this case, standard lift, 15 inch radius track. I have a spring that's um, 24 and a half inches, uh, two inch ID, 225 wire. I'm using the Atco four inch drum, and my door height is seven foot. And the, re um, the result on that is that will lift 114 and a half pounds. Um, I think some you know common applications for that would be well obviously kind of like the extension spring scenario you could use this to use up some odd stock I got these springs what can I use it on um, you might have a situation where a door is flat out out of balance you know it's got the wrong springs how do I explain this to the owner um, well you could you know weigh, weigh the door and then put in the specs of those springs and show them this is why your door is not working. You know, so there's things like that. Um, there was some other ones too. I think I wrote down some other. Um, another way, it'll also give you increased um, your cycle life information. But also, um, please note, it does tell you how many turns are required. Because Paul asked that question earlier. You know, how do you know? I mean, you may get to a certain situation, high lift, vertical lift. How many turns do I need to put on this door? Enter the specs, and it'll, it'll give you how many turns to apply in that situation so um, I think that's um, pretty much pretty much the um, benefits of the weight calculator so is there any questions on that one can anybody think of any other uses for that one but it's uh, one, one to kind of play with that might get you out of trouble um, in the future and like I said coming soon for the Android version and then for the Apple folks as well, presently you get the benefit of, um, we push uh, little news things to you, new product introductions. Um, if we're running a special on something, then you'll be the first to see it on your, um, on your smartphone. And I understand that's coming for the Android folks as well. So that's the mobile news feed. And you are able to kind of go into the program and customize your preferences. If you want, um, you can do this for the Apple version presently, but if you want to have default um, settings always show up like you usually work on 16 by 7 doors and I have 2 inch ID stock you can make it so that those specs always show up when you open up the app um, you can change the background if you don't want the service spring logo which we hope you do or if you don't want boring black you can make stars and galaxies and uh, mountains um, you can turn the news alerts on and off and then you can change um, the, the units from uh, metric or from material to metric. So a lot of folks up in Canada appreciate that. So as a thank you, we are offering a special price on this through the end of the month. It's normally $19.99 for the app. And the um, Apple version is $14.95. And the Android version is uh, $14.99 through the end of the month.